good evening everybody and once again welcome back to the video this is part two of from zero to uh, data hero building dynamic data platforms like a pro in the first part i essentially gave you an overall uh, architecture on how we'll be essentially building a data platform right the main requirements are we want an ability to create jobs we want an ability to fire jobs we want an ability to schedule jobs we want to make sure the error handling is taken care we want to automate the infrastructure we want to automate that complete process right from raw to silver right so let's learn the second part very basic part right so hopefully makes sense right so again this is what we are gonna, gonna build right the first part i went over that i'll leave the links in the description if in case you haven't watched that so in this part we would like to build this particular block over here so let me explain what we are going to do in this block so anytime we create a job through a through an api right uh, we, we're going to do all the api part in the upcoming next part but anytime we create a job we will say i want to create a job for customer or orders on s3 right um, automatically we will create an s3 event rule which will forward all those messages into an amazon sqsu and um, basically anything fails will automatically go into dead letter so that spinning up the infrastructure component uh, is something that we're going to work on this particular video meaning we'll write some python code and the goal of the video is to generate an s3 event notification and sq as a dead letter and automatically the events should push data from that particular directory into that particular sqsq that's the goal of the video so hopefully made sense right this particular block that you see that's something that we're gonna code in python today all right so i do have the code but i will you know explain you everything hopefully that made sense so anytime you enter something in the raw zone automatically through s3 events you will forward that into sqs so if you have two three four jobs automatically this particular infrastructure component would be created on the fly all right enough of talking let's get straight into action all right hopefully you guys can see my screen so um, as you can see, I do have a main function. So let me show you the JSON payload, right? So based on this JSON payload, as you can see, uh, here I'll be providing the S3 path, uh, the table name and the prefix. Based on that, I want to automatically create an SQS. I also automatically want to create a dead letter queue. Also want to add the policy and configure everything. So I want to spin up all of these things on fly, on, a, on an API request, right? So I'm, I'm writing that particular Python code over here. So the way, uh, again, this is a very simple function. And then again, eventually this will be converted into a microservice as we go deeper on the parts. So here we define AWS access secret. Again, we are developing a framework uh, to ingest data into a transactional data lake. So I defined all my access secret key. This is the payload over here. So what I did is basically I have all these functions that I wrote. So create SQSQ. The job of this function is to create an SQSQ configure sqs policy as you can see uh, here i have a template the job of this is to basically as you can see put this placeholder and add the policy to the queue right similarly i have a uh, i have a function configure s3 event this function is responsible to push or configure the events and push the events from the specified directory into the sqs queue sharing back my screen so hopefully this made sense extract s3 bucket is a function based on the regular expression the job is to provide the s3 bucket create dead letter queue is a function which will create a dead letter queue whatever queue name you have it will simply append the word minus uh, hyphen dlq and it's going to create a dlq here is a function to create or configure the dlq policy now let's see this in action over here on line 141 we define the payload so the payload is pretty straightforward, right? We define the S3 path, we define the table name, we define the AWS account and the prefix that, that we are in, interested, right? So first, let's go ahead and create uh, this bucket. So now let's get started. So I'm gonna come here, click on create bucket. I have this S3 bucket. You will be given a Python file called datagen.py. We will run this file shortly. Um, this Python file, when we run, it's going to generate some fake data into a raw folder. Inside that, it's going to create two more folder, customer and order. Assuming we are mimicking that some fake data is being posted into there, right? So this particular payload, we are saying that, hey, I want to set up uh, for this particular prefix on this particular bucket, right? Now, if you see the code, uh, basically what I do is I create the client object, the SQS and the S3 client object. After that, I create the SQSQ over here. I configure the policy, meaning I'm going to add the policy. 
I print uh, the queue URL and the queue ARN. After that, I create a dead letter queue and then I add the dead letter queue policy, right? Once that is done, I essentially configure the S3 event. So basically I've automated everything, right? So this particular block over here, you see, the creation of this is completely automated through that script. And eventually as we progress on the parts, part three, part four, part five, we will see all of this coming together, right? So that's that, right? So now let's let's see this in action, right? So I'm gonna right click and click on this Python file run on .py. So here you can see uh, automatically he was able to create an SQSQ and a dead letter queue, configured all the policy, and it basically did everything that, 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 that we want. So if I go to properties and automatically, if you see here, here you can see automatically event notification, it did create a rule. Uh, automatically it's gonna forward all the event that comes into this particular prefix into an Amazon SQSQ. Heading back to my queue, if I refresh, here you can see two queues, the customer ingestion queue and the customer ingestion queue DL queue. So if I click here, if you see access policy, automatically this has been configured, right? The script did that for us. Uh, if I head over to the dead letter, um, let me make sure, yeah, dead letter queue. As you can see, a dead letter queue is automatically being configured, right? So the, the, the script is working fine. As soon as I run, it essentially uh, created an SQS queue, created a dead letter queue, configured both of them, then essentially configured the S3 events to push all the events from that directory into the SQS queue. So hopefully the Python function or the template makes sense, right? Now it's our job to test it out. So what I will do is I will come here and first purge this queue. Again, I'm teaching you to develop, uh, I'm teaching you how to develop like data platforms now, right? This is one of the components of the platform, right? So I refresh. Now, what I will do is right now on the S3, I do not have any files, as you can see. Over here, no files, right? So come to this Python, and there's a file called datagen.py. If I right click and run, it will generate some fake data, right? As you can see, order and customer, some fake data. We can publish some more. So probably we'll do like, 25 of them run this and again as you can see uh, it's inserting data on the s3 right if i refresh raw zone as you can see orders and customer if i go inside customer i have some files now what you will see over here automatically uh, pretty soon as you can see those messages are coming into the sqs queue meaning our uh, infrastructure component is working fine we wrote some python code which is able to generate this particular infrastructure component for us now, later on, when we create the microservice, a Swagger UI API, we'll link all this together, right? So, so if I come here, if I come to the customer queue, uh, send or receive message, poll for message, and if I show you any one of them, here you can see those S3 events are now coming uh, here, right? So anytime new files comes into S3, automatically it's forwarded into the SQS queue. From there, based on the architecture that I showed you, right, we'll have a glue job which will poll that particular queue and ingest data into a transactional data lake. Again, we still have the work to do about the job metadata, API, you know, dynamic scheduling, all of that is remaining. All we have done today is just worked on this particular block over here. The Python code allows us basically, uh, based on your S3 input, it allows us to define an S3 event, SQS, dead letter, and it forwards all the event to the SQS queue. That's the part two of the video. Part three, we'll start working with the other components of the architecture, right? right? So hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, again, these videos are teaching you real world example of building data platforms. So this is one of the components of the data platforms. Then we are gonna work on the job metadata, then the Swagger UI, the API, uh, then the glue job, and then we'll put everything uh, together, right? Thank you so much for watching the part two of the video. I will be waiting for you guys to, to come and join for the part three. Thank you. And if you have any questions on part two, list your questions in the comments and I'll try my best. Links to the part one is in the description section below and the code is on my GitHub section. That being said, keep smiling and I'll see you in the part three.